Carmelos. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. I really hope you're having a beautiful and an amazing day. This is a timeless collective reading for the sign of Aquarius. So we have the Tower, the Lovers, and the King of Swords here. Um, first of all, for some of you, you had to make a very important choice when it comes to um, perhaps partnerships. Okay, this could be friends, family. Yeah, the Fool card is here. Let's just touch on this. Not much is coming out, so... The tower is here. In the tower, you see two people being like thrown out of this tower. And you also see the lovers here. Two people who are coming together. Um, and then there's the king of swords. There's a choice that has to be made. A lot of you, you've had to free yourself from certain partnerships. This could be romantic, platonic business. Um... In order for you to get in alignment with something that is actually for you, many of you, you had to eliminate, like you had to purge some type of energy out. Um, if, the, if this is for some of you, if you are in some type of um, relationship, especially romantic at this time, you and your person both could have had to go through a very quick, like, um, Almost like Dark Knight of the Soul type of energy here. Um, you could have been experiencing with the Tower card a, a lot of endings, a lot of deception, betrayal. Just a, a lot of darkness may have just come to the surface all of a sudden. This, of course, could have been due to some kind of spell work, manipulation. Um, there's been solar flares. There's been energetic shifts. There's a lot that's happening. Um, whatever happened was meant to happen the way that it happened. Because now it's like for many of you, you should be coming into some kind of awareness, especially self-awareness about who you are, what you're meant to do here, who you're supposed to connect with, who you need to free yourself from. So sometimes, of course, we know it has to get bad before it gets better. That's what I'm really getting here with the Tower card, the Lovers and the King of Swords. The King of Swords here, um, for many of you, you could have a partnership with someone. This could be you or someone else in this King of Swords energy. This is someone that has a very matter-of-fact type of personality. Um, definitely type A personality, like someone who was all about the facts, you know, the numbers, the data, the facts. This is someone who is honest. They have integrity. The Fool card, yeah, and then the High Priestess here. So you most likely have to take a leap of faith here and just trust your intuition in the situation. I feel like there's been a lot of secrets surrounding something here, okay? The Three of Pentacles is here, wow, and the Ten of Cups. All in all, though, this is good with the Ace of Swords. I feel um, <clears throat> some of you definitely at this time, you're learning how to move. And what I mean is how to move more strategically, how to keep your cards more close to your chest. Um, I never really want to talk too much about myself on the on the channel, um, just as a messenger here, but I will say what I've noticed with the spiritual warfare, even here in this community, you know, and recently I, I've been on YouTube now for three years and you just get to a point where you know it's time for you to phase out of something and into something else and you have the new levels New devils, of course, but I've, I've even seen so many people here in the tarot community and it's a collective energy of a lot of warfare. Um, people are, are, are really on the brink of just giving up. I mean, giving up on, on their life completely because of all of these negative energies. And at some point for me, I always say you really have to look at the role that you play in certain situations and it's not to minimize anyone's pain. But for me, I feel that account self-awareness and, and accountability is very, very important. And this whole warfare that we're in, it, it has a lot to do with the narcissist versus the empaths. You know, it's light versus dark. It's light workers versus narcissists or whatever the case is. And, and one thing you have to learn how to do is when you're dealing, the, the way to deal with the narcissist is not to deal with them and to starve them. Um, for people who don't even re realize that, you know, tarot, like any other tool of divination, it's a, it's an exchange of energy. Um, there's a lot of people right now, they're, they're telling you everything about their life, everything that's happening, everything about their life. And they're wondering, well, how exactly is the enemy able to continuously attack them? 
one thing in, in my own just self-study, everybody calls themselves a high priestess because they they have a craft or they have a tool of divination. When you really do the study of a high priestess, what it takes to become a high priestess, a high priestess typically is the kind of person nobody, you don't have access to a high priestess, okay? And this is something that I'm even taking into account myself. You don't have access to a high priestess. You can't just walk up and talk to a high priestess. And if you are walking up and talking to a high priestess, you don't know they're a high priestess. Um, and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but this is just something that I think a lot of people should pay attention to. What I've noticed in even the spiritual community, especially tarot, is there's nothing sacred about it anymore. You know, years ago when the world pretty much changed due to the pandemic, everybody now has a deck of cards because it's a means of employment. Um, any person can develop spiritual gifts. Any person can read tarot, honestly. Um, just not every person chooses to have a platform. And I feel that now everyone is screaming high priestess, high priestess, but a lot of people, they don't actually have the sacred wisdom and knowledge to consider themselves a high priestess. And when people tap into the sacred wisdom and knowledge, they go out and they share it with everyone, leaving the narcissists and the energy vampires to, of course, know everything that they know. So the enemy is actually using what we know, our sacred wisdom and knowledge against us. You now, with with this type of energy that we're seeing here, the Tower of the Lovers, the King of Swords, if you want to actually protect something, then you have to learn the actual art of war. And I have readings from two and three years ago about this, spiritual warfare. Do you understand the art of war? That's why I always say your silence speaks a million words. Your privacy is your power. A lot of people, though, you know, nowadays with celebrities and everyone else, everybody wants to be in the spotlight. Everybody wants to talk. Everybody wants to have an exchange. And too many people have access to your soul. And you have to be mindful of that. And it doesn't matter whether you're a school teacher, a nurse, doctor. It doesn't matter what your profession is. Be mindful of who you are sharing and exchanging your energy with because now there is no veil anymore. You know, there, there's a lot of different beings that are walking around here. All of us are spiritual beings just having a human experience. Some are good, some not so much. So it just feels to me like a, like the, the, the tower is crashing. Everything is crashing and burning just in the world in society, in relationships, partnerships, business, everything right now, because people who don't understand that there's this energetic shift that has happened, they're really being left out. And it has a lot of people in this frenzy. They're very fearful right now of, oh my gosh, what is going to happen? Well, everyone is trying to figure out what's going to happen once they are, um, once the mask comes off because the chameleons, they can't blend in as well anymore. The shapeshifters, the, the narcissists, it's harder for them to blend in because so many people are awakening. I feel like the truth is coming out a lot about a lot of these different collaborations, these projects, um, the types of the, the things that people have committed to when it comes to um, trying to affect people who may have sacred wisdom or knowledge. Right now, if you feel like you're one of those people, it's like it's very important for you to trust yourself and you may be forced right now to take a leap of faith into some new things that are very uncomfortable for you for the sake of you fighting for yourself, your wish fulfillment, your happiness, and even your own family, your bloodline. Yeah, eight of cups here. You have to be willing to walk away from all things that no longer serve you, no matter how hard or challenging it may be at this time. There's just a, a major collapse, I feel, of all things that are, are fake. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what type of community you belong to. If you're fake and phony, you're going to see um, these towers. And you see a lot of good people right now. They're being attacked for sure. But oftentimes when you see a person or even you're experiencing attack and attack you have to get clear with yourself as to who exactly are you are you is attacking you like 
are you being attacked because you you're not in alignment or are you being attacked because you actually are in alignment is this a, a, a test of your commitment and your spiritual endurance or are you just stuck in the matrix just going around and around and around chasing your own tail and completely blind because there's a lot of people who are completely blind who honestly are under the impression that um they know it all. Six of Wands here. There's a lot of good things coming in, though. The World card, yeah. There's a completion here. There's a completion and there's a level up. This World card is falling right underneath the High Priestess. For a lot of you, like I said, there's some kind of spiritual awakening, especially with the Tower happening here. There's some kind of spiritual awakening or something like that that's happening for a lot of people. And it's all about whether or not you're willing to truly answer the call. It's truly like the survival of the fittest right now. The world card here. And it's interesting that I say that because I see like the world card with the high priestess, especially now in the spiritual community, there's a rise of a lot of spiritualists and, and light workers. Um, but not every person is genuine. Not every person has spiritual integrity not every person that you watch that you hear that you see is teaching from from a from a, a place of of a of pure soul a good heart <clears throat> yeah as i said the word heart three of swords exactly you have a lot of people they're they're preaching and teaching from their own broken heart Seven of, of cups, their own illusions. They're carrying their burden. Um, yeah. <laughs> wow. I feel like I'm I'm really stepping on on the toe or two, and I <laughs> I don't even want, I didn't want to come back and do that. Ten of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles. This is clearing away again all things that don't serve you in order to have this type of independence, security, success, abundance. Heavy emphasis on the word independence. A lot of people see nine of pentacles. They say single, self-sufficient. I used to say that too, but a lot of people are single, but they're not independent. And some of you, you have those kind of people in your life and your energy. They're single. You're single. But are you truly independent? Because if everyone is hanging on to your every word and watching your every move and waiting for you to say and do everything where everyone is financially dependent on you, sexually depending on you, all of this obsession, all of this idolatry here, you're, you're, you're walking alone, but are you actually independent? And a lot of people aren't. A lot of people don't know what to do if, if another person is not depending on them or if they can't depend on someone else. This is the energy with the tower here that's being purged out. Some people, if you see the Three of Pentacles, some people literally, they're being paid to watch and monitor what other people are doing, especially when it comes to partnerships and relationships, your teams, your collaborations. Yeah, but there's an end being put to all of this chaos, this conflict, the jealousy, just being completely overwhelmed with the drama. It's an end for the people who choose to put an end to it. Temperance. Yeah. Doing things with some level of moderation and self-control to ensure that you have peace and balance in your own personal life. This is things happening behind the scenes as well, the Three of Pentacles and the Temperance here. This is people working behind the scenes against you, but you also have your own spiritual team that's working in the background to ensure that as you are carrying these burdens, that there is still going to be... Um, rewards and recognition you've been promised something but you do have to take a leap of faith with the fool card here to go on to this new journey to actually receive whatever it is that your spiritual team that god is saying is actually for you yeah. <clears throat> four of cups five of wands i feel like right now it's just very difficult for a lot of people to keep pushing forward to have this mentality that oh yeah there's you know, all of this great favor because right now favor doesn't seem fair to anyone. It doesn't. Because with this shift that's happening where the last is becoming first and the first is becoming last, a lot of people are experiencing being discontent, bored, looked over, 
rejected, hurt, bothered, whatever the case may be. And it's just because we're we're in this period right now of this five of one of wands energy, spiritual warfare is conflict, this chaos, jealousy, envy, competition. It's all around you. But again, knowing how to be tempered with the temperance energy, that's like that shamanic type of earth angel energy, knowing how to heal yourself, knowing the importance of your place and position in the world when it comes to you fighting up against all of the different groups or people or whatever or whomever who are watching, monitoring you, gang stalking you. Or whatever. That's what is going to ensure that you get out of this here. There's a heavy, heavy emphasis on like the Archangel Michael energy with the King of Swords and the Ace of Swords being here. Your truth, your authenticity, who you are at a core and you standing close to that Empress, divine feminine energy is what will allow you to create and manifest exactly what you want. You have here. This is like mother and child. This is even. This is also like the energy of Mother Earth coming in to support you. Page of Cups. Some of you don't realize it, but you're you're going. You're on this fool's journey. You're becoming the page again. Meaning, you're. It's time for you to create something new. It's time for you to. Embrace a new set of emotions. It's time for you to be fun and flirty. It's time for you to return back to a state of innocence and purity that has has not been there because of this spiritual warfare. It's time, whether male or female, for you to really, really tap into your divine feminine energy, nurturing yourself, creating things. Understanding what is 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 fertile for you and what is not. Understanding: Are you coming with the soil or are you coming with the seed, or do you have both? And then aligning yourself with people who can actually come in and nurture what you have. Understand, like I said, being single, but not being toxic and codependent. Are you nurturing the right people, places, things, and situations? And are you allowing the right people, places, things, and situations to nurture you? And a lot of people don't understand that with this transition, what's happening is you're going back to being a page. There's nothing wrong. You hear people say in tarot, oftentimes when they see pages, oh, that's childish, that's immature. But the heart of a child is, is usually very pure. The Empress and the Page of Cups are here together. The mothers and children are being protected also by this King of Swords, Archangel Michael-like energy because the truth and clarity is here that those who are possessing the power is indeed the, the women and the children. And it's not me trying to be like a feminist or sexist. It's true. There's what, what the world needs right now is nurturing, is love and light and to be nurtured because of most of these people are running around here and they're mad, sad, angry because of mommy, daddy issues and the fact that they were not nurtured. And so they're in their ego, they're toxic, they're codependent and boom, of course, they become very narcissistic. The world now is full of vampires. Knight of Wands is here. <clears throat> The Knight of Wands is here. I just feel that um, I see the Five of Cups here too. If you're in some type of rut, it's so important right now for you to bring yourself out of that and understand that this is all. Um, <clears throat> my throat is bothering me. Um, some of you, like if you are feeling very hurt, disappointed, rejected, um, regretful, or whatever the case is with this Knight of Wands energy here. I feel like even with, like I just, like with my throat, the way that it's starting to act right now, I haven't had any throat issues until now. It's so important for you to express who you are and how you feel. And like I said, to be very authentic, if you want to have the six of wands and the 10 of cups, you have to actually express what you want and be very confident in the expression of what you want. Um, for myself, even like here on the channel, I feel that, for my, I would like to go back to talking to the collective about you and not the collective energies, the, the karmic this and, and that person and, and this group, because all it does is it keeps you distracted. Some people are, are searching for answers and it's like once you get the answer, which is very clear, somebody is codependent on you and you're codependent now. You're obsessed with finding the truth and clarity about a situation 
to the point that you're just existing and you're not living your life. You're living in fear. You're living um, paranoid. You're afraid to trust anybody. Therefore, like I said, that Empress page energy, it's not there. It's like the universe is here to support things that you're doing, but you're not doing the things that need to be supported because you're so overwhelmed most of the time with the hardships that are, are, are piling up because of what's happening in your environment, which if you really want to be honest with yourself, and I'll be on, you have full power and control of it. So what you watch, what you listen to, what you eat, where you go, what you do, it all has everything to do with what's manifesting in your life. Yeah, people, are, we all have past life karma and ancestral trauma and inherited pain and we can we can we can break out all the psychology books, but at the end of the day, it's what are you focusing on? Who are you focusing on? How often are you focused on yourself? Look, the four of wands with the two of wands behind it. You have to make this decision to go towards a period in your life where you can celebrate and be celebrated, and there can actually be wish fulfillment, happiness. That type of peace and the prosperity and the abundance that you desire in your life, it's there. But you have to make a decision to no longer focus on the things that are not serving you. There's a king of pentacles here and the five of pentacles. This is the energy for a lot of you that's been attacking you. That's why this tower is here. You have the King of Pentacles, the Five of Pentacles. This is someone that could have left you out in the cold. This is someone that perhaps you, there was a codependent, toxic relationship. You left this person out in the cold because at some point they left you out in the cold. Perhaps you know, um, it's karma. This is an energy vampire that's constantly rushing in. Wanting to go to battle and have war with you because you've gone within, you're off the grid. You're not focused on this person or this entity or this energy anymore. And of course, now this is someone who is trying to bully you, to force you to conform. Because this is someone who is very much in an illusion and conforming most likely because of finances or their outdated beliefs when it comes to security, stability, or whatever. But this person is lacking strength. And because you have strength, these are the type of people or energies or entities that are doing everything to try to spiritually blind you and have you in some type of mental entrapment here. That's the reason why Four of Swords and the Nine of Cups here you find wish fulfillment in places where there is emotional peace. Meaning you get away from people, places, and situations that don't bring you peace. It's very, th these tasks are, are hard for people to complete, but what is being asked of you, it, it's not actually, it, how can, it's simple. <laughs> it's simple yet very hard for a lot of people to follow through with. It's simple. You you leave the job. It's simple. You leave the relationship. It's simple. You block people. You you stay away from people. You heal. It's just a lot of people find it hard to find the strength to do what is required to get them from out of the way of their own shadow. And a lot of people right now are being forced to embrace their shadow, but it requires a great deal of work. It's very, very hard work to embrace your shadow. Some people don't realize that, yeah, you're a shadow. You've done things to people in a past life and it's biting you in the butt now. Everybody, and, and I have to be honest, I see it here on Everybody now, it, it's like people talk about church hurt and I'm looking at how the tarot readers now, everybody is, Shaming everybody. Everybody is talking bad about one another. You see all the tarot readers now, they're they're begging for money and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, this this seems like church. I thought people were leaving the church trying to be spiritual. And now the spiritual community is full of the fakes, the frauds, and, and the phonies as well. So it makes people, it's a it's a cycle of people not understanding 
where they can actually go to lean on anything. And that's exactly where you should be. You don't need to go to any other person and try to lean on them or seek another person out for your own inner truth. People now, if you want nine of cups, if you want wish fulfillment, you're going to have to do the work. You have to do the work to tap into the illusions here because all of us, myself included, you're looking in the mirror and you're seeing something and there's something about whoever, whatever you're seeing that you're obviously having a misunderstanding about. Or you don't fully want to face it. I feel like that's why a lot of people, tarot is a is a, a, a tool of divination that's very, it's easily accessible, but most people are not actually doing the work to grow and to heal. You get stuck on using tarot, idolizing it to look for an answer but it's still distracting you from actually healing. It's just like when you go get medicine. It's treating the symptom, but oftentimes it's not actually curing whatever you have. It makes you feel good to watch a reading or listen to something, and it gives you a little bit of clarity about a situation, but it's not changing anything as far as your cognitive behavior like your your cognitive behavior as to how to deal with the situation. It's just like people read the Bible all the time where you're reading the Bible, but do you know how to actually apply what what wisdom you perhaps are gaining from the Bible when those situations appear in your everyday life? I think a lot of people now, it, it's time for you to apply what you're hearing, what you're learning and what you already know, honestly. Yeah, look, Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles is here. The illusion and the distractions is what's blocking a lot of people's money. Your security, your stability, your inheritance. It's the inability or the unwillingness to see the truth about it. These are past situations that are still keeping people to a sore, stuck, still made, stuck, stagnant, toxic, complacent energy. Six of Pentacles. There's money to be made. There's money to be made. There's offers. There's opportunities. There's success. There's abundance. But you have to take the lead. King of Wands, you have to take the lead on these situations. This is the birth. This is the rise of natural born leaders. Some of you, you were born to be leaders. And on your path thus far, you've gotten stuck. A lot of people, to be perfectly honest, even in like the tarot, and I'm only speaking about like the tarot community because that's where this platform is right now. Don't idolize any other person when you're meant to be a leader yourself. It doesn't matter if it's a preacher, a prophet, a reader, a professor. It doesn't matter. I, there's just too much. I, I feel too much idolatry happening in the in the collective to the point where people are very much focused on what someone else is doing and how they're doing it. And not enough people are focusing on the gifts that God has given them to be able to actually have equal give and take or to be generous to other people. Generous with the gift, the talent, the ability, the resources or the tools that they've already been given. This is, this is a lot of misguidance and misuse. The Wheel of Fortune still popped out. The Wheel of Fortune is here. It's, wow, wow. <laughs> Six of Swords, the Chariot, the Two of Cups, and here is a star. The Hangman in the reverse. You're not stuck. It's an illusion that you're stuck. You're enlightened. There is joy all around you. Yeah, you're being watched. You're being monitored. Four pinnacles. People want to hold you back. They hope that you stay stuck, but that's a choice. Yeah, there's absolutely people who are fully invested in watching you, monitoring you, 
trying to come up with a scheme or a scam, a plot, a ploy or whatever, in hopes that you will walk away from things that are truly meant for you. But this is where you have to, again, you have to do the work to heal. There's a lot here about movement. Somebody is just, it's time to just go. I don't know if y'all can hear that. It's, <laughs> it sounds like a helicopter is like landing right in front of me. It's so crazy how loud that is. It was very startling. It just as I was saying about movement. Somebody could be considering going to the military. The Wheel of Fortune, the Star, and then the Two of Cups. For some of you, your ideal partnership is um, let me see, how can I say this? For some of you, you have not met your ideal partner. For some of you, you have met your ideal partner, but there's something here about movement, about travel, about location, possible relocation or just a journey that you have to be willing to take in order to go towards what's actually destined for you. Starting at the beginning here, you have the Tower and the Lovers. You have the King of Swords and the Ten of Cups with the Six of Wands. Now, ending the reading here, I have the Six of Swords, the Chariot, the Wheel of Fortune, yeah. You have to accept this new beginning. It's being presented to you, you, but you do have to accept it. And here's the king, the queen of swords, who will be the match to the king of swords. For some of you, if, th if this is a situation of you know that you're in some type of connection already, like when you know you manifested your person, you could be with them in, in whatever way. Both you and your person, I feel, are being guided right now to release something this new beginning that you have it, it requires you to sacrifice something for you to get to the sweet spot there's something here that has always been very difficult for you to release that you're going to have to let go of. this could mean you have to leave a job you have to stop dealing with certain friends you have to stop dealing with certain family members you may have to change your location some of you, to be honest, your circle of friends, your everything in your external environment is the reason why internally you're suffering I, for myself. And I'm sharing these things with you guys because off camera, like I, I try to really be about what I'm talking about here on camera. Like for myself, literally, <laughs> I haven't been active on social media in years, but even though I don't post on social media, I'm, I'm, I'm practically unfollowing all tarot readers. And, and lately, I don't even, I don't log into my Mystic Tory Tarot. I don't log into this YouTube because I don't want to see the feed. On this particular account, it's, it's all tarot, mostly. I started back to just only look at my personal page where it is, it's people, you know, manifestation boards and um, mood boards and vision boards, like things that are going to be enriching to me. I have no desire to see the the, the titles or it, of any of the stuff really on tarot because I'm like this is I've been seeing the same stuff for the last three years that I've been here. None of it has has actually. I mean, it's not that it's not helpful and it's not changing because everyone is at a different place in their journey. But when you yourself are being called to move in a different direction, answer the call. It's, it's good sometimes for you to go and clean up your social media and change, like change w what you're seeing. Because I feel that a lot of people here with this awakening that's taking place, it, you're probably going to be called into a season of isolation where God can truly prune you to prepare you for what's next. A lot of you at the beginning of this reading, I kept hearing single, but not independent. A lot of you are single, but you're not independent. You're single, but in the spiritual realm, you're still married or committed to something or someone. There's still something that has a tie to you. And until you are single and independent, business partnerships, romantic partnerships, you cannot join in them because you're not actually equally yoked with people that can come to you with partnership because your mind and everything is so committed on what's happening in the spirit 
which is for a lot of you is, is stuff that's irrelevant. The the energy vampires, the psyche vampires, the the narcissist, all these different people feeding off of you. You have to set the boundary and say that has nothing to do with you, so that you are energetically open, aware, and ready for what is actually for you. I hope that makes sense. Bottom of this deck, you have the Phoenix card. Yeah. It's like you're being offered a second chance at life, but you have to be willing now to put an end to the despair while cutting the deck the devil. You can't do things in excess anymore. You can't be addicted to your own patterns of behavior. You can't be addicted with with finding out the answer to things that once you find out the answer to them, it's not going to help you anyway. This this codependency, this obsession is keeping a lot of people stuck in their own shadow, unable to get to like the, the actual light. It's like the light is going to shed light on your shadow, but then if you just sit there and wrestle with your shadow, well, that's not going to help. You, you still have to graduate from that, that point, that place in your journey. Of learning to actually love and accept your shadow, but not be like not dwelling on the things that have happened in your life due to the fact that at some point you are operating out of your shadow. Some of you, your shadow has just gotten completely out of control. And people around you, their shadow has gotten out of control. And, you know, you can say, well, my shadow is out of control because their shadow is out of control. Whatever. But somebody out here is a hot mess. And then you can say, you know, everybody's going to say, well, it's them around me. Okay, well, take accountability for the fact that they are around you. Birds of a feather flock together. You have to get out. And some of you, you're going to have to take very extreme measures to get away from certain people and situations that are very chaotic where you're around people who are unhappy, they're miserable, um, they're, they're jealous, whether openly or secretly, they're irresponsible. Anything around you in your external environment that does not reflect who you know you want to be, you're going to have to get rid of it. It's easier said than done, but it's one of those things for a lot of you, this Phoenix card is still here. In order for you to put an end to the despair in your life, you have to choose now to restore and redeem yourself. Waiting game and divine timing makes me think again that temperance card there and here is the death card some of you it's like you're waiting on something to end so that like you can manifest something new manifestation friendships and purpose here you can't keep waiting you're gonna have to put an end to some of these things yourself and that's that's the test here are you willing to end it yourself are you willing to let go? For some of you, even for some people who, you know, twin flame, soulmate journeys and all this other stuff. Again, it goes back to you're single, but you're not independent because you're still codependent on this illusion that somebody's going to come and save you or you're meant to be somebody else's knight in shining armor and you have to give or you have to suffer in order to have love. All of this outdated thinking and conditioning and programming, it comes from your shadow self. It's it's not true. It's something that's still nearly forcing you to conform to an outdated way of thinking and programming. This waiting game here of constantly waiting to find the perfect person or waiting to become the perfect person, putting your life on hold for certain situations, you're going to have to learn to let go because there's you really don't have control in certain things. There's something here that it's a dead end and you know it is. Therefore, I feel like spirit is bringing in some kind of inevitable end. That's why the tower came out first. Some of you, it's like you won't let go of something 
you won't see it, you won't recognize it, you won't embrace something new. So the universe is coming in and it's going to destroy everything because there's a, for some of you, there's a situation, a situationship or friendship or relationship is standing actually in between you going into what is truly for you. And if it's not, you are supposed to be going into a, a connection or something with someone new. There's a way of being a cycle here with a particular person or your job or whatever it has to close where you're going to have to say, if I'm going to stay here, this has to be totally different. Sometimes when we talk about any, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to necessarily leave a person or a place behind, but the mindset that you have when you went to their personal place, that has to be left behind. This, this has more to do with environment and mindset than anything. There's definitely an ending coming, though, because it's meant for someone to start meeting new people. You're supposed to be creating like a new community, meeting new people, learning new things, going back to school, certifications, whatever. It's something there. There's a new place. There's a new opportunity there's a new vibe a new person there's something new that you're need that like god is trying to introduce you to and you're gonna have to sacrifice something for someone you have to let it go because here you have manifestation friendships and then purpose you now are about to start connecting with certain people who are a part of your soul family that are actually doing the work they're looking for their their purpose in life they understand the meaning of certain things. You're, it's time for you to discover your life purpose, but it's like, first, wait a minute, first, you have to let go of this program and this conditioning. And if you are surrounded by people who have that programming and conditioning that you have to release, naturally you have to release them. Somebody is, is thinking a lot right now about a soulmate. You could be thinking about a soulmate because you may, or some of you, you may have to walk away from this soulmate. Because deep thinking is here with sad news and soulmates. Some of you are going into soulmate connections with people, though. Or you're already in this type of connection. And a soulmate could be a friend, a family member, or a lover. You're learning to think differently about situations. You're learning that even when you receive bad news or sad news or things don't go the way that you want, you receive disappointment or rejection. I feel like for some of you, you're either becoming like this wise counsel for someone or you have wise counsel from another person in your life or you're just meeting people where you and this, this other person or this group, you guys can offer one another constructive criticism and feedback without trying to hurt one another. And it's here so that you can become greater. This is creativity and love here. This is how you create meaningful friendships and relationships. This is how you start that new creative endeavor or whatever it is that you are actually destined to do. Yeah, this car was flipped over in the day. Clean up. It's time for you to clean up though. It's time for you to clean your house. Like I said, for some of you, you could already have like this situation happening in your life, but it's just time for you to clean up. You know, before you know, we'll be approaching spring. Um, the new cosmic year will be coming soon. And in order for you to make space now for these meaningful friendships or this soulmate, these relationships, you now are going to have to put a, a, an end to everything that's a dead end. You know you have friends, family members, or certain lovers, just situations around you that are, they're just not working. And the sooner that you will like embrace that and you will allow yourself to take that full journey and go back to that page of cup energy of just being innocent, fun, flirty, not trying to act as though, you know, it's, when a cycle closes, you learned everything in that cycle. There's a new cycle opening now where you have to allow yourself to be the fool. There's something about this new cycle that's opening up for you. There's things you don't know. 
be willing to learn. There's things you don't know about shadow work and healing. Be willing to learn. Because I'm going to tell you, tarot is not going to help you do all the shadow work and healing. It's not. I don't care how good a reader is. A tarot reading is not going to change your life. It can give you clarity, insight, help raise your awareness, but that's not going to change everything. And some people, even with tarot or whatever your, your vice is, it will keep you stuck with the same void instead of like helping you to understand the importance of you going towards your own victory. So understand your voids and vices and how they are blocking your victory and your success. Heavy emphasis on a lot of you on your relationships. You're not getting the news that you want to hear. And for some of you, you have really good, solid people in your life. And you you could be pushing them away because they're telling you things that you don't want to hear. Make sure that you're not operating out of your shadow. Because every now and then, God will give you somebody that is very, very honest. That king of swords, ace of swords, that's the kind of person they're going to tell you the, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. But that honesty, that truth, it can be brutal. It can be hurtful. It's painful, but it's what's needed. Iron sharpens iron. It's what's needed for you to see that, okay, something here has to end. In order for you to manifest things, whether it's something new or, like I said, just you having a, an upgrade in whatever it is that you're already dealing with i'm not I'm, I'm not trying to paint the picture oh you gotta leave everybody alone like no you have to leave the version of you alone that got you in certain connections to begin with there's a lot of hidden blessings that you don't see Love is on a lot of people's mind. When it comes to healing yourself, in order for you to have love, you have to focus on self-love. Some of you, with all of this movement that I'm getting here, six of wands, six of swords, a chariot, some of you, you're going to be required to separate from a person, a place, a thing, or situation. You may even have to travel or relocate. This, for some of you, is just a, a getaway. For some of you, there's going to have to be a period of, of separation here for you to truly, truly learn and understand something about self-love. I'm feeling this very, very strongly. Some of you are extremely beautiful, but your like your beauty and your creativity is being blocked. Yeah, family and tribe because in entrapment here, your mindset about love, about friends, about family, about community, it's actually trapping you. There, it, it's causing for some of you a major wedge between you, like what you have, and what you really want. And if this isn't you, it could be your person. I feel like somebody here, though, if, especially if this is, if I'm talking to someone and you're in like a, a connection right now, you and, and your person both, I feel, are going through some kind of spiritual test or lesson. And it's teaching you some very important lessons right now about self-love. And I can't help but, I don't know why it was so heavy on me before, Somebody here does not understand that they're not as independent as they think. Well, family, somebody here is still very dependent on what other people say and think and what other people around them are doing. This feels like somebody is under the impression that um, they're doing things out of ego. They're telling themselves that they love themselves or they're telling themselves that other people love them. So that means that they must be just very, very beautiful and they have everything figured out. But it's like now this cycle is closing and where someone is meant to go now, their next leg of their journey, it's like that's not enough. 
you receiving love from other people is, is cute, but how much do you love yourself? Because to actually be a vibrational match for real love, it really is based on how much you love yourself, not on how much other people love you. Which makes perfect sense, like I said, in different communities now. The, even you see the fall of like celebrities. Everybody is, oh my gosh, they have so many followers and, and this or that. But the true test here is how much do you love yourself? Because the, the fake stuff is not, it's, you know, it can get you noticed, but it's not going to last. Somebody now is understanding that true beauty has everything to do with their own, like, self-love. You definitely have a soulmate coming in. Or for some of you, you're already with your soulmate. But this person or you or both of you are going to have to have the courage right now to unleash your creativity. Yeah, unleash your creativity to start really speaking up and speaking out about who you are and standing up to people in your life, especially having those boundaries. Being very clear on what your desires are. Being very clear about what you're not going to tolerate anymore. This is very, very empowering, whatever this is. And you're being advised to have faith. Like I said, for some of you, you're about to do something brand new. But for some of you also, um, there's just a major turning point in your life. Even if it's in a current relationship or friendship or job or whatever, poised is here. And so it's heavy energy of soulmates and loyal heart. Wow. Building blocks. Some of you are really being like prepared for the one. And of course, this person could already be in your life. Or you're, it's like God is, is shaping you, molding you, cleansing you, purifying you, purging you. But something here has to take place. There's a tower moment here. Something has to take place for someone to understand the true definition of love. And you're only going to truly understand love when you understand first and foremost, of course, how to love God and also how to be in love with yourself. There's love all over this reading. Heavy soulmate energy. Soulmates is out here twice in two different decks. Self-love and love came out together. So you will attract your ideal partner, whether this is in business or in love or in both. When you put an end to something that's a dead end, it's like literally as soon as you end something or mindset, a bad habit, you recognize a toxic trait or, or whatever it is, you're going to start manifesting like crazy. Like everything is just going to fall in place. And this could, like I said, it could be as simple as you just change your mindset. Being, this could also be someone finally being open to embracing their spiritual journey. This is about someone becoming a non-conformist. Somebody for a long time could have been against manifestation. This could be the type of person that um, could be very conservative, maybe even very religious. And they've always just been like, no, I don't. You know, don't talk to me about shuttle work or manifestation. Someone now is realizing that whatever their beliefs are has had them in this cycle where they've been constantly experiencing hardships and sad news. I feel like someone has a soulmate, a friend, a family member that is showing them a different way to to view things in life and because of that it's changing it's causing this person to love themselves and to want to be more creative and there is a major major blessing and ble like breakthrough that's going to come from that 
if you're in a connection with someone right now that's going through this, it will require some patience. But I feel like this is the kind of situation that if you just release control, this is something it'll be worth the wait. Somebody, somebody here is destined for greatness. There's just a lesson here about self-love and letting go of outdated beliefs that they have to learn through like some kind of shadow work. This is real good though. <laughs> Flirt. Extend your light-hearted energy to others. Yeah, go out, make friends. Connect with new people, do different things. You never know who you may run into. Heart-to-heart -heart conversations, yeah. As you go out, you mix, you mingle, you meet new people, you change your energy. You're going to start um, meeting new people. But for some of you, to be honest, for some of you, you are you have a connection that's about to really deepen with a person. All you have to do is free yourself. It's time for you to take back control of your life. But someone may, you may have to go through a separation in order to do this. Some of you are going to have to take back control of your life by separating yourself from a person place, thing, situation, or whatever, because it has become um, something that you could have unconsciously fallen into a, a trap or a cycle of codependency with. And, and I feel like it was something that was unconsciously done. You're being asked right now to pull your power back, focus on yourself, love yourself more. You and someone eventually will have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation and your love life is going to ascend to a higher level of commitment. There is a separation here, though. I, if I'm, what I'm getting, it's like God is just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Some of you, it's like you you could have gotten connected to a person and you've gotten so invested in that person. God was like, wait a minute, because if you get any more invested in this situation, you're going to forget all about me and glorify me. So when that happens, God will come in and will cause a tower and say, wait a minute, you, you need to take some time out. <laughs> because you, you really forgot you're you're forgetting what your what your point and purpose is here. I just keep hearing it. single. You're single, but you're not independent. You're single, but you're not independent. Yeah, past life relationship is here. Wow, and codependency. Keep an open mind and pay attention to the red flags. Yeah. For some of you, this is a very, um, this could be a soulmate for some, maybe even a twin flame. A lot of you, you have a, um, a very significant connection here, but there is past life karma. And you have to resolve these karmic debts and release the codependency. If you're in a very high level of commitment, you're not supposed to be codependent with that person. Or you're not supposed to be codependent on that person. The two of you both have a very significant purpose in life. Therefore, you both should be able to come together but remain independent. Some of you, you're in a connection. Or you run the risk of connecting with a person and it becoming unhealthy because you have not completely resolved your, your issues around codependency.